Hi, my name is Karthik Pushparaj. I work with Endeavor Software Technologies. We leverage agile software development methodologies to build mobile applications for a wide range of businesses across the globe. Now these businesses could be banking, insurance, or healthcare, etc. In this video, we will cover basics of agile software development and some of the challenges faced by new scrum teams, especially with the ceremonies and how to overcome them. We all know what you mean by time box, right? A time box is the maximum amount of time the ceremony can last up to. For our daily stand-up meeting, we would be comfortable to have a maximum time of 15 minutes, beyond which the scrum master should facilitate to stop the meeting right there. Now, in case your time box is exceeding in your daily stand-up meeting, there is something else that we are discussing apart from answering the three main questions. What did I do after my previous stand-up? What am I going to do before my next stand-up? And what are the blocks that I faced? The Scrum Master plays a very vital role in facilitating these meetings and bringing back the team together to focus on answering these three questions and no other discussions. Now there's a great saying, right, in, in Scrum Codes. When you say yes to something once, you're most likely going to say yes to it again. But that being said, when the Scrum Master tries to stop the, the 15 minutes time box, he is most likely going to do it again the next day. So each day we're going to get better at it. So stick to your time boxes. Well, that is a very good question. Well, right before you start your planning, you need to have a few checkpoints. The first one being, do you have the team's capacity? Some of them might be on a planned holiday or some of them might need to attend a training. But ensure you have the team's capacity known right before you start the planning session. Secondly, do you have the prioritized product backlog before you start the planning session? That is again more important. And third, you may want to know the state of the product increment. That is, sometimes some user stories might get back into the product backlog that will be pulled up in the priority and it's most likely going to come in the next sprint. So you may want to do a small repointing on those user stories that are most likely going to come back in the next sprint. And finally, you need to observe what is your past performance as a team. How much have you been able to accept? So these are some of the key checkpoints that you may want to have right before you start your planning sessions. Now again, how would you want to know? Um, I mean, you may want to know some of the best practices that are available in the industry, how to conduct a planning. You may want to divide your planning sessions into two. Uh, the first part being what items to be brought into the sprint backlog and the second one, how as a team you're going to achieve this product backlog, that is the sprint backlog. That is, the team, when they bring and talk about what to bring in, they're committing that they're going to complete these many user stories or these user stories in this sprint. And that becomes the sprint goal. And the next part of the meeting, they're going to discuss how that they're going to achieve the sprint goal. It is important to know the state of the product increment because sometimes in some sprints, we may have some of the user stories not completed and being put back into the product backlog. Now these user stories might move up in the priority and are most likely to come in the next sprint to be implemented. So it is important to know the state of the product increment. And finally, we have the team's past performance. It is important the team observes what their past performances are and how much user stories have been accepted. Now these are few of the most important checkpoints that you may want to have just right before you start your planning. Now there are some of the standard practices that are followed by great scrum teams in order to conduct effective scrum planning sessions. You may want to divide your scrum planning sessions into two. The first part being to discuss what you want to do. What are the user stories that you may want to bring in to the sprint and commit to a sprint goal. And the second, you want to know 
how you're going to do or how you're going to achieve the sprint goal. The team self-organizes, discusses what are the tasks that are need to be done in the second part of the meeting and they are being added into the sprint backlog. <laughs> uh, well, no other agency can push for additional work onto you. In case the Scrum Master or the Product Owner or any other external agency are pushing any work to you, I mean, I mean additional work to you, that means in the past you have been accepting the work that has been pushed on you. Now let's be realistic, let's look at a past performance, draw some data inferences from the past and check how much you were able to accept and complete the sprint goals in the past sprints. Take up as much as the team is comfortable to commit and then in the later sprints you can keep increasing your productivity slowly and this way we improve sprint by sprint. Remember again when you say yes to something once you are most likely going to say yes to it again. So do not encourage any other external agency to push more work to you. Folks, so we've seen some of the challenges that are being faced by Scrum teams that just get started with Scrum. But you know, Agile is an ocean. And then we'll come back with more of this. So until then, happy Scrumming. <laughs>